In this video, I'll explain how to set an A values to Plank using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you two examples and the first example will show how to replace an A values by planks in a vector object. So for this, we first need to create an example vector as you can see in line two of the code. So after running this line of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new vector object appears, which is called vec. And we can print this vector to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line three. So after running this line of code, you can see that we have created a vector object containing six elements, whereby the third and the fifth elements are NA. So we can also check the class of our vector by line five of the code, because this is very important for the replacement of our values. So if you run line five of the code, you can see at the bottom that the class of our vector is the character class. So if we want to replace the NA values in our character vector by plinks, then we can apply the code that you can see in lines seven to nine. So in line seven, I'm first duplicating our vector because I want to keep an original version of our input vector. So if you run this line of code, you can see that a new vector object appears at the top right, which is called a vec plank. And at this point, this vector contains exactly the same values as our input vector. However, in line eight of the code, I'm using the isNA function to subset our vector and I'm selecting only those values in our vector that are NA. And then I'm replacing these values by an empty character string. So as you can see, we are assigning two quotes without any content to the NA values. So if you run line eight of the code, our vector object is updated and we can see that by running line nine of the code and after running this line of code, you can see at the bottom that we have replaced the NA values at the third and at the fifth position by an empty character string. So in this first example, I have shown you how to replace NA values by planks in a vector object. However, it is also possible to replace NA values in the columns of a data frame by planks. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 11 of the code. So if you run lines 11 to 13 of the code, some example data is created at the top right, which is called data. And if you click on this data set, you can see that our data frame contains six rows and three columns, X1, X2, and X3. And as you can see, each of the columns contains NA values. So let's assume that we want to replace the NA values in the entire data set. Then we first should duplicate our input data to keep an original version of the data set, as you can see in line 15 of the code. And then in the next step in line 17, we are converting all columns of our data frame to the character class. This is important because in the next step, we then want to replace the NA values by an empty character. And for that reason, we first have to convert all columns of a data set to the character class. So if you run line 17 of the code, all columns of our data are characters. And then in the next step in line 19 of the code, we are again using the isNA function to subset our data and we are assigning to all NA values an empty character. So if you run line 19 of the code, the data set is updated and we can see that by clicking on the data set at the top right, and as you can see, we have replaced all the NA values by planks. Note that this output data set that we have created is a matrix instead of a data frame. So in case you want to work with data frames, you would have to convert this matrix object back to the data frame class. However, in this video, I have explained how to replace NA values by planks in the R programming language. If you want to learn more on this topic, you could check out my homepage, statisticsglobe.com, because on the homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail, and I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video. Furthermore, if you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave me some positive feedback in the comments, and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new videos to the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time.